Hey everybody, Kyle here with Spicer Designs. What are Australian Brooklyn's? Only one way to find out. Yeah. Pretty strong. Welcome back to the channel. Now I gotta get off. Oh, damn it! Put too much grease on that. You can't have too much grease. I know, I know, some people think my intros aren't funny and I'm stupid. Well, you're correct. <laughs> hey, if it gives one or two people a laugh, it's all worth it. All right, today's video, we're gonna be talking about the new Cameron excavator I just picked up. This is the RH14G. And if you watched my last video, you know that I just went and picked this thing up from Parsley Equipment just east of Indianapolis, Indiana. I will have website information for Parsley Equipment down in the description. Now this is my second Cameron excavator that I've bought. I also own an XH26D, which is sitting right behind the camera. But this excavator, I bought as an investment. I plan on renting this thing out, but before I rent it out, I have a lot more things I need to do to get everything in order as far as rental agreements and liability coverages and all that crap that goes along with it. But the most important thing I need to do is get familiarized with this machine because I can't rent this thing out to someone if I know nothing about it or kind of all the quirks about this particular machine. Machine. So today we're gonna go completely over this machine. Machine. We're going to talk about all of the specs and features, not into crazy super detail. It's just a small Chinese mini excavator, gas powered. So there's really not a whole lot to it, but we'll go over all the controls and how everything operates and just see how smooth it is and all that good stuff. If you're watching this video, you may have seen the video I just posted last Saturday where I'm actually putting this thing to work. So this video is actually being recorded before that one was. That's why it's nice and clean. So enough chit chat. Let's dig in. All right, first and foremost, I just wanna make this clear. This is not a commercial for Kimron. I'm not trying to sell you on Kimron. Kimron is responsible for selling machines. That's not my job. I'm just here to provide you with information on a machine that I did a lot of research on and I decided to purchase and in this particular situation, invest in. Now, Kimron is based out of Oklahoma. That is where the headquarters is located. They are a fairly new company. They are opening up other dealers. One just opened, of course, uh, just east of Indianapolis where I picked this one up at. I went over that in my last video. And I believe they have another one somewhere down in Kentucky. And I think there's a couple more actually in Oklahoma as well. And after doing my research on Kimron and talking to the owner, what Kimron does is they work with Chinese manufacturers to get these Chinese excavators in various different sizes, and then they make upgrades to them. And what I mean by upgrades is they put USA motors on them that are compliant with all of our EPA regulations. And this particular one is a gas engine and it uses a Briggs and Stratton, just like you would see in your lawnmower. And they also use Yanmar and Kubota diesels and their diesel units. And I have a Yanmar diesel in my three ton machine. Now, along with that, Hydraulic thumbs come standard on all of the Kimrons, which is a really nice feature. When you look at some of those other base Chinese models that you find in auctions, they typically don't come with hydraulic thumbs. That's something that you have to add on afterwards. And to be honest, a lot of people don't really wanna mess around with that. The other thing they do to upgrade their machines is they upgrade their drives and their pumps, which is very important. That way you are not married to the manufacturer where you have to get their exact replacement pumps or drives. You can actually get name brand pumps and drives that will interchange with the ones from Kimron, which is really nice to have because the other models don't offer that. So it makes parts availability a whole lot better. Another difference that you'll find between the Kimrons and the base Chinese models that you'll find in auctions is they have upgraded spool valves for their controls. So the Kimrons run a lot smoother than those other Chinese machines. And Ron over at the K&R Equipment channel, which I'll have links for that down in the description, he actually made a specific video talking about the differences between the controls and the smoothness of the Kimrons versus the auction machines, along with a bunch of other videos where he's actually putting these things to work. He does a really good job of that on his channel, kind of showcasing all of the capabilities of all of the different models. So here's what this thing comes with. Obviously you get the machine, machine, and you get this handy dandy little China toolbox. Now, all of these Chinese excavators come with this identical toolbox. We're all aware of that. If you know anything about these Chinese machines, you know that you're gonna get one of these toolboxes. It says Shideli tools, Shideli. I don't know how to say it. And what we get here are some 
Is this the right kit? No, this is for my other one. Duh. Wrong toolbox. Here it is. Okay, we've got our manual, which is very important. And it comes with a, some kind of a vest, I think. It's a vest. Maybe it's chaps, it's like a chap. Some kind of a garment that it comes with, I don't know. I'm not gonna be wearing that. I think he told me that's for the, the foot pad, for like a heat barrier. This machine comes with a hand pump style grease gun. Comes with your typical American style Zerk fitting grease attachment. And it comes with the inverted nipple little pointy thing. This is kind of like the China grease fitting, I guess. And there are two different style grease fittings on this machine, which we'll go over here in a minute. Seatbelts, uh, I am gonna have to put that on the machine for renting. And then it comes with some wrenches and some Allen wrenches and some other grease fitting, just some spare parts. And I think I'm gonna Velcro this to the roof just in case I need it, I don't know. So as far as the manuals go, you have a separate manual that is specifically for the RH14G Cameron, which gives us all the information on the excavator itself. We have another manual that is specifically for the Briggs & Stratton engine. So if you were to have an issue with the engine or you needed parts, you'd refer to this manual. So basically all of the main components of these Cameron excavators, parts really aren't an issue. You've got American-based engines. You have universal style pumps that can be interchanged with name brand that we use here in America. Other than that, it just comes down to a bunch of freaking steel, some hydraulic lines and some hydraulic cylinders. There's really not a whole lot to them. 2,600 millimeters, yeah. What the f does that mean? And no, I don't need anyone to convert that for me. I know how to convert it. It gives you quite a bit of information about this thing here. Quite nice. Kilograms, damn it! I have to convert everything. This will be fun. Okay, now that we have all that out of the way, let's start talking about this specific machine. Machine. This is the Kimron RH14G. And this machine comes in right at about 2,200 pounds. So just over a one ton unit. And this thing is all powered by the 14 horsepower Briggs & Stratton engine. Now, believe it or not, this little mini excavator can actually lift up to 1,500 pounds. It's actually pretty famous for lifting the back end of a truck, which Ron did over there on the K&R equipment channel. So for being such a small package, it actually has a lot of power. Another important spec for me is the max radius. For me, I like having the reach on the machine and this thing will reach out about nine foot, four inches. So we'll test that out in a little bit. We'll actually measure it from the front of the blade and then we'll turn it and measure from the side of the track. So let's talk about the controls now. All the Kimron units are standard with the ISO controls and they don't have an option or a valve that you can turn to change them over to backhoe controls. So on the left-hand side, forward and backward is going to move your stick and left to right is going to turn the whole house of the machine on the center turret there, however you wanna phrase that. And then over here on the right side, as you're sitting in the seat, there's a switch that you can flip. And once you flip that switch, the left and right now becomes your boom swing. So you can interchange between the boom swing, if it has that option, and spinning the whole house. On your right hand side, forward and backward motion is gonna control your main boom. And left and right is going to operate the bucket. Now you have three controls right here in the center and then you have this other one off to the side. This one on the side here actually operates your hydraulic thumb. So it's a little bit different from my other mini, but just something to get used to. The two taller sticks here in the middle, those are actually gonna run your tracks. So that's what you're gonna use to move. And this is a one speed machine. The little small one in the middle, that is actually going to operate your front blade. And then right here, just on the right side of the operator station is your throttle control. And then next to it is your light switch for the LED light that's mounted on the boom. Then you have your ignition and you have an hour meter right here. Over on the left side of the operator station, you have your hydraulic fill right here. 
And this is kind of an ignition override, and it also turns the power on to your hour meter. So in order to start this machine, you actually have to have this turned forward so that you can start your machine, and then it also engages your hour meter to start counting. So if you leave that on, which I actually made this mistake, your hour meter is gonna to continue to run. And then we go ahead and lift up the seat. Very easy and accessible access to your Briggs & Stratton engine. And right here is our gas cap where I'm going to be using ethanol free fuel for this. Because this engine is limited on ventilation, it doesn't have a, a blower fan on there, I'm gonna run ethanol free just so it doesn't run so hot. That's pretty much it. I mean, it's basically a lawnmower engine. Now, as far as dimensions, the length of the tracks are right about four foot long. The width of the tracks are about seven inches wide. And these tracks are a standard track. There's like a three digit number on there, I guess. And you can get these tracks anywhere. You don't have to hunt for these things in China. They're a standard size. And the actual track width, the overall width is 36 inches. I mean, this thing will fit almost through the door of your house. It's that narrow. So it's a small machine, got a lot of power, and it's very capable. Just comes in a really small size, which could be very convenient in many situations, especially like landscaping jobs where you have to get through a gate. So a machine like this definitely has its place. And the overall height of this thing to the roof, it looks, it looks kind of tall. 88 inches, so this thing would fit inside of an eight foot door. And the bucket is 16 inches wide from the outside teeth to outside teeth. Uh, that's a smaller bucket. It doesn't have a real big capacity, but you know, it's a smaller machine. Here is another thing that I am very confused on. So you see the bucket teeth here. I actually flipped them. They had this angled portion coming up angled from the bottom and it was flat across the top. So you can see in the picture right here, the difference. To me, it just didn't look right. So I actually flipped them all and now they're all sitting nice and flat on the same plane with the bucket. I feel like this looks right and it just seems more functional. Now that orientation of the teeth, that's not a Kimron thing. That's just the Chinese excavator thing. I looked at a bunch of pictures and all kinds of other different brand machines and they were all set up the exact same way that it was when I got it. So I haven't seen any that are flipped the way that I have it now, but let me know in the comments if you think that it goes the way I have it now or the other way. I don't know. This just makes more sense to me. And the other cool thing about this bucket is the teeth are bolt on and so are the side teeth. So if you wanted a smooth face bucket, you could just unbolt them and you have a smooth face bucket. Where for my larger machine on this larger bucket, I don't have that option because they're weld on bucket teeth. So I actually made this grating attachment or smooth edge. Uh, someone called it the Spicer buck tooth. There's all kinds of funny names in the comments. But if you didn't see this video, check it out. It was, it was decent. I mean, I don't know, I guess it might've sucked. Seven foot, two inches from the plate. And the most important thing on everyone's list is the price. Now these RH14Gs come in a couple of different models. So there's kind of like three different options there. I have the one with the boom swing, but I do not have the extendable tracks. So this exact model that I have is going to run you right around 8,500 bucks. Pretty good price. And there's gonna be people out there that say, well, I can get that same machine for $4,200 from an auction or right from China. Now I personally don't wanna deal with the company overseas, sending my money over there to a company I don't really know or trust, dealing with all of the tariffs and the overseas shipping and issues in the shipping yard where there could be fees and delays. I would much rather just pay a company like Kimron to be the middleman and do all that crap for me and I'll just pay a little extra money for it. Because at the end of the day, $8,500 for this machine is literally a little bit more than what my Coyote Zero Turn cost me. And if you have any property and you have a nice zero turn, 
you're gonna be at a minimum paying $7,000 for that and anywhere up to $20,000 just for a lawnmower. So a little mini excavator like this really isn't that far out of reach. Now again, I am not trying to sell you on the Kimrons. I'm just providing you with information that I have gathered and done research on and I'm just sharing it with you. That is it. So if you are interested in the Kimron, I will leave all the website information down in the description below for k &R Equipment over in Oklahoma and for Parsley Equipment, which is located just east of Indy. And on their websites, they have all of their pricing and inventory, all the information, all the specs, everything you need to know about these machines. And I will continue to have more content using this machine around the property, getting more familiar with it and kind of getting into the whole rental process. I'll be going over the trailer setup and once I get rental agreements and all the legal stuff figured out, I'll be sharing that as well as time goes on. So if you like this video, please hit that thumbs up. That really helps the channel. I put a lot of time into these videos. That's all I ask. Just, just hit that little button. Please consider subscribing. We definitely have a variety in the channel. We like to keep things entertaining. Uh, I try to get the Keystone Girl in the videos as much as I possibly can. Sometimes it's challenging. Blah, blah, blah. Please subscribe. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you on the next one. You can get them with the boom swing and no ex... <laughs> <sighs> <sighs> That was garbage too. Machine. I know, I'm an idiot. 14 foot ceiling. This might actually come in handy. It's like a, like a nice mobile scaffold here. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> hello, hello, test, test, test. Can you hear me?